Enlisted Men, Working Life. Have you ever wondered what your days would have been like if you were a soldier working in a brick fort like this one in the middle of the 19th century? The life of the common soldier has never been easy, but life at Fort Point for the enlisted men was an especially tedious struggle. Though they never faced an enemy in battle, they had to keep themselves and their armaments ready at all times to do so. This task was made more difficult by the harsh environment in which the fort is situated. We hope you dressed warmly for today's visit because the wind blows constantly here at Fort Point and warm, dry days are rare. The cold, salty spray from the ocean penetrated everything, threatening to rust out the soldiers' cannon and other weapons and damaging their gun carriages. It also made their woolen uniforms cold and damp. But even with all these difficulties, the work of the fort had to continue daily. There were cannon drills in which groups of men practiced the intricate teamwork needed to fire a 19th century cannon. There were marching drills on the parade ground. There were powder kegs and cannon to be kept in battle-ready condition. There was a daily guard duty at the Sally Port Gate. From sentry points inside the building on the first and second tiers, and from lookouts on the highest level of the building, known as the Barbette Tier. The name Barbette comes from the French phrase en barbette, which refers to the practice of firing a cannon over a defensive wall rather than through an opening in the wall. And lastly, there were all the maintenance chores and cooking that needed to be done to sustain the hundreds of men who lived and worked at the fort over the years. Cannon drills, including cleaning the inside of their barrels and firing the huge gun for target practice, could be quite dangerous, but they were absolutely necessary to keep the guns in working order and the artillery crews ready to defend San Francisco and the Bay. A cannon that had not had its barrel cleaned properly the last time it was fired could explode during its next use, endangering life and limb. And cannon teams that were not at a state of ready should an enemy threaten the city could not react fast enough or accurately enough to serve the purpose for which the fort had been built. So the men practiced and practiced and waited for an enemy that never came. While no one wants to be in mortal danger, it's safe to assume that there was a high level of frustration about constantly preparing for a purpose that was never fulfilled. But at the very least, the hard physical work kept the men warmer than they might have been sitting idle and prevented some of the boredom, which can be so dangerous for morale. It's not difficult to see why the Army rarely kept a company at Fort Point for longer than a few months of duty before they were moved to Army posts on Alcatraz Island or to Fort San Jose and Black Point, the last two known as Angel Island and Fort Mason. The exception was Company B of the 3rd Artillery, which was stationed at the fort from March 1861 just as the Civil War was beginning until early autumn of 1863 for a total of two and a half years. Given the winds and salt spray that whip across Alcatraz and Angel Island, living conditions and work at those posts wasn't much of an improvement over life at Fort Point, nor was the Presidio the lush park that it is today. During the middle of the 19th century, the Presidio was a series of wind-blown sand dunes and was still quite remote from the pleasures of the city. But the barracks were slightly better than at other posts. Down the road from Fort Point in the area that now includes the Warming Hut, you can see a collection of buildings that house the overflow of soldiers from the fort as well as housing and shop space for civilian workers like laundresses, wheelwrights, and carpenters. At its highest level of staffing, Fort Point included as many as 500 soldiers, 
and there was no way that the fort could house all of them, plus support staff, inside the fort for any long period of time. But if the fort had faced an enemy attack, everyone would have to crowd inside it. You can imagine just how crowded it would have been and how difficult it would be to live with that many people in so little space. As huge as the fort looks from the outside, from the inside, you can see that the actual living quarters were relatively small because the parade ground takes up so much space. If you want to know more about caring for the armaments and the powder supplies at Fort Point, have a look at one of our other videos in this program called Boom! The Cannons of Fort Point.